Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Harihar Fort The historical Harihar Fort is a very old fortification which can be found in Maharashtra, India. It was built many centuries ago by the Suna dynasty, who reigned between 1187 and 1317. The location was perfect to watch over the busy trade road moving through the Gonagat region. The Harihar was taken over by Briggs, a British commander, in 1818. The British plan involved using artillery to destroy the fort's access roads and defenses. As a result, the British demolished numerous forts, stairways, pathways, and trails. But Officer Briggs recognized the importance and beauty of the rock-cut steps and left them intact. What makes this fortress so impressive is that it was built on top of a huge hill. It can only be accessed by going up a steep ladder from the base, practically vertical. It is a two-hour climb with great difficulty. Basically, you have to scramble up a stone ladder whose steps are so worn, it's like trying to climb up a slide. Inside this ancient fort, there is an incredible view of the entire area. It's pretty easy to see why the site was chosen for a military fortress. There isn't much left of the actual fortress. It looks like the stone has been quickly melting over the past almost 1,000 years. It's nothing but a ruin but once situated in a remarkable place. Number 9. The Temples of Palenque The Temple of the Inscription at Palenque is one of the most mysterious structures left behind by the Maya. Palenque is an ancient Maya city located in Chiapas State, Mexico. It is practically bursting with temples, but this one stands out as something of an enigma. It gets its name from the fact that it's carved with over 617 glyphs. The temple was constructed around the year 675, commissioned by Pakal the Great, and then finished by his son, Khan Balam II. The temple itself sits at the very top of a huge step pyramid. The temple looms over 68 feet above the ground below. It's decorated in images of ancient Maya gods, and although its exterior now looks bland and dreary, made of ordinary whitish-brown stone, it was once painted completely red. It was a great bloody temple standing atop an eight-tiered pyramid. The greatest mystery of the temple came in 1952, when the Mexican archaeologist Alberto Luyer discovered a slab on the floor that didn't quite look like the others. It had holes drilled in each corner, which Alberto realized could be used to lift the stone from its place. After he and his crew did that, they found a stairway leading down into the dark depths of the pyramid. It took almost two years for them to clear out the rubble, at which point they came upon the tomb of Pakal the Great. He had been entombed inside the pyramid, with the temple acting as a kind of cover for his grave. They actually found the remains of Pakal the Great himself, his body trapped in a mysterious sarcophagus. On the cover of the sarcophagus was an image that appeared to show Pakal as an astronaut, seated in some kind of space-traveling vehicle. According to historians, the image was merely intended to represent the king journeying through the earth, the sky, and the underworld, while others believe it is evidence that the Maya had come into contact with a space-faring people from beyond the stars. Number 8. Farm Frozen in Time Archaeologists in Israel have just discovered the remains of an ancient farmstead that was abandoned in a hurry 2,100 years ago. According to the experts, the farmers who lived here deserted their property because of an impending military invasion. Archaeologist Amani Abu Hamid, the leader of the excavation, described the farmstead as a time capsule, frozen as it was when it was initially abandoned. The excavators found storage jars that were still sealed, pieces of a weaving loom, and other personal items that were forgotten as the occupants ran for safety. There were many looms suggesting that weaving was an important task, so the occupants probably kept herds of sheep or goats. While we don't know who exactly lived here, the structure's age indicates they were citizens of the mighty Seleucid Empire. But when the Hasmoneans invaded, a society of early Jewish people based in Jerusalem far to the south, the Seleucids ran away. Whoever lived at this farmstead had likely been enjoying a relatively peaceful existence, weaving fabrics and harvesting crops until an army suddenly appeared on the horizon and they had no choice but to flee into the unknown. Even more interesting is that the excavations have also unearthed traces of a far earlier settlement that came 1,000 years before this farmstead was built. Clearly, this part of Israel 
located north of the Sea of Galilee, has a rich history of human habitation. And now for number seven, but first it's shout out time! I wanted to say a big thank you to Tyrannel and Angela Muse for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about mysterious places. Number 7. Woodstock Palace Woodstock Palace was an ancient royal hunting lodge used by British monarchs over a span of about 700 years. Located deep in the English countryside, this place saw a total of 16 British rulers pass through its great halls. Ethelred the Unready used it, Henry VIII spent time here, and it was the birthplace of King Edward III's eldest son, the Black Prince. Woodstock Palace was even used as a prison for Queen Elizabeth I by her half-sister Queen Mary I during the Protestant uprising. She was allowed to leave in April 1555. But after 700 years of use, the lodge was demolished in 1720 to build the even more luxurious Blenheim Palace. Recently, researchers with Wessex archaeology have found the remains of some ancient structures buried on the palace grounds. They discovered the ruins of a series of water mills from the 14th century before beginning a dredging job, which had once been part of the original Woodstock Palace. They came across stone water channels used to direct water from the mill. Even more interesting is that these stone water channels are directly linked to a lake on the property, which had probably been a body of water called the Queen's Pond. This pond was created artificially to help drive the mill wheel. It was named after Queen Philippa, the consort of King Edward II, back in 1330. Number 6. Timbuktu Timbuktu is an ancient city in Mali, which during the 15th century was the biggest intellectual hub in all of the Islamic world. In fact, Timbuktu in West Africa was a bustling center for culture and learning during what historians call the Golden Age of Islam. It all started after the Mali Empire grew to be a superpower in Africa, and the Malian king Mansa Musa I annexed the city of Timbuktu in 1324. He helped to transform what had been a seasonal trading post since 1100 into a hub of learning, culture, and architecture. Islamic leaders and African kings traveled from all over to meet in Timbuktu, where they traded, learned the news of the world, and fostered strong allies with the rulers of other nations. By the 16th century, Timbuktu was a major city of learning, with over 180 schools called maktabs. Not only was this place for spiritual growth, but a place where scientists could come to study astronomy, mathematics, and history. Unfortunately, all of that changed before the 17th century. The Moroccan Saidian dynasty showed up, deposed of the rulers of the city, and destroyed everything. Schools were reduced to ruins, manuscripts were destroyed, and all those magnificent books of knowledge were gone. The city never made a full recovery. As recently as 2012, Al-Qaeda attacked northern Mali and destroyed what little historical relics still remained from the days of Timbuktu. Number 5. Ancient Pottery Workshop Archaeologists in the ancient Egyptian city of Alexandria found a whole bunch of cool artifacts over a series of recent archaeological missions. One of the most interesting places they found was an old workshop used for the manufacturing of amphoras. These were ancient jars that were used by everyone from the Egyptians to the Romans for transporting things like oil and grain. Pretty much anything that needed to be transported was put into an amphora jar, then shipped across the sea. This workshop was where many of them were built roughly 2,000 years ago. But its history stretches into the Middle Ages. The archaeologists found a lime-making kiln from the Byzantine era, which began about 1,500 years ago. When the pottery workshop had been converted to a cemetery, they also discovered two burial sites from the Middle Ages. It's shocking because it goes to show just how things change over many centuries. Archaeologists even found a small collection of ancient coins dating back to various eras. One of the coins had the face of Alexander the Great stamped on it, another the face of Zeus, and another of Queen Cleopatra. The discovery indicates that the workers at this site were receiving good treatment and living a decent life. Number 4. Suakin Island Ruins The Suakin Island Ruins are the broken remains of an abandoned coral city. For 3,000 years, this port city, located on the edge of the Red Sea in northern Sudan, was a strategically crucial point. 
It was initially built by the great Egyptian pharaoh Ramses III in the 10th century BC. Back then, it was used strictly for trade and exploration. 1,000 years later, followers of Islam took the port over, and it became necessary for the Africans moving to Mecca for their pilgrimage. But no matter how the city evolved through the years, it remained prosperous and hugely important to whoever controlled it. There is even an old legend of a king who ruled the city, had 360 wives, and a great palace full of treasure. The fascinating part of Suakin was that its buildings were made from coral. But everything went wrong in the 19th century when it became a hub for the slave trade in Eastern Africa. After a rather dark period of history, once the slave trade had diminished, the port became unnecessary and was abandoned in the 1920s. From ancient Egypt until only a century ago, this place flourished. Now all that's left are the broken remains of the Great Coral Walls. Number 3. Mysterious Japanese Tomb Archaeologists made a recent breakthrough involving an ancient Japanese tomb thanks to satellite images. A research group carried out a study that had never been done before by looking at ancient Japanese tombs called Kofun from the sky. The issue with these tombs is that they are a forbidden place. Not even local Japanese archaeologists are allowed to breach the walls of the magnificent tombs because they are considered sacred. So researchers have little options when it comes to learning more about them. What most people don't know is that the Japanese islands are dotted with hundreds of these ancient burial mounds. The biggest were made in the shape of a keyhole, which has always been a huge mystery for archaeologists. We know they were built between the 3rd and 7th centuries, and that the biggest is located near Osaka. It supposedly holds the remains of the legendary first emperor of Japan, Emperor Jimu, who died in 585 BC. Jimu was said to be a direct descendant of the sun goddess Amaterasu, making him a god king. While nobody knows if Emperor Jimu truly did exist, the researchers have found out one thing about these tombs. Using the satellite images, they discovered that all the tombs are oriented to face the exact same way. Each of these tombs faces the rising sun, and that seems pretty fitting considering Japan's nickname is the Land of the Rising Sun. Number 2. Treasure in the Valley of the Kings A truly shocking tomb has just been discovered in Egypt, very close to the famous Valley of the Kings. It was uncovered in the necropolis of Dra el Naga and contained four new mummies. Even more awesome is the fact that the archaeologists have already identified the owner of the tomb. Its main occupant was a man named Amenemhat, a goldsmith who lived during the 18th dynasty. This was between 1550 and 1292 BC, years that were ruled over by famous kings and queens like Tutankhamun, Nefertiti, and Hatshepsut. According to Egyptologist Zahi Hawass, the goldsmith was undoubtedly a nobleman of some significance. Human remains, funerary objects, jewelry, and other items were discovered within his tomb, with over 150 Shabti statues. These statues are fascinating because they were intended to come alive in the afterlife and be used as servants for the deceased. They were like ghostly robots that went into the underworld with the dead person so that they wouldn't have to do any heavy lifting for the rest of eternity. Archaeologists also believe there could be even more tombs buried underneath these ones. And here's something shocking you might not know. Zahi Hawa says that modern Egypt was built on top of ancient Egypt and that most of the old world is still buried underneath modern concrete. He said that up to this point, researchers have only discovered about 30% of the Egyptian monuments. He believes 70% of the ancient world is still buried. Number 1. Ebla Ebla was an ancient city that saw its peak once in the 3rd millennium BC and again around 1800 BC. These days, this mysterious ruined place is most famous for the shockingly well-preserved archive of cuneiform tablets discovered in the rubble. Archaeologists actually found 17,000 of these tablets from the days of the Sumerians, dating back to around 2250 BC. These tablets contain unprecedented knowledge of the ancient world. They detail things like governmental functions, the mixture of religious beliefs from Sumerian gods to Semitic deities, and the inner workings of the ancient economy. These tablets were written at a time when the city was a huge economic center governed by kings who came into power through democratic elections. There was no dynastic succession, but rather citizens who voted their kings onto the throne. 
Sadly, one of the earliest civilizations that practiced democracy was destroyed in 2200 BC by the Akkadian Empire. It was rebuilt 400 years later by the Amorites and then destroyed for a second time by the Hittites. After that, Ebla was a small village in a dusty wasteland until it completely vanished in 700 AD. It remained hidden from the world until archaeologists dug it up in 1964. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!